Dear students, today we are reading The Adventure, written by Jan Naligar, and this is part 3. Last, we left Professor Gaitonde leaving the library. We know that the purpose of Professor Gaitonde's visit to Bombay was to find out what exactly had happened to him, and also try to get back to his home and family. As he could not find his home, where it had existed in the real world, and also he could not find anybody in Pune who knew him, he thought that his son, who worked in Bombay in the real world, would be able to help him. In Bombay, first he goes to the library. When he was leaving the library, absent-mindedly he takes one book with him. Accidentally, he shoves this Bakar into his left pocket. He found a guest house to stay in and had a frugal meal. Frugal refers to sparing or economical as regards money or food. Frugal means less costly and simple. So he found a guest house to stay in and had a simple meal. He then set out for a stroll towards the Azad Medan. To set out for a stroll means to go for a walk, to walk in leisurely way or to wander. As a noun, a stroll is a leisurely walk. And he goes towards the Azad Medan. Medan refers to an open space in or near a town used as a parade ground or for events such as public meetings. There was a lecture to take place at the Azad Medan. That is why Professor Gaitonde is going there. In the Medan, he found a throng moving towards the Pandal. A throng refers to a large pack of crowd. He found a crowd moving towards a Pandal. Pandal refers to a temporary structure often used for large meetings. So, a lecture was to take place. A lecture was about to happen. Force of habit to Professor Gaitonde towards the Pandal. Force of habit refers to something instinctively. We know that Professor Gangadhar Pan Gaitonde was an eminent historian and a leading public figure of Pune who was much in demand for presiding over public functions. We also know that he had just completed his 999th occasion for presiding at a function. So he does this instinctively. He goes immediately towards the pandal. He is used to giving speeches. He is used to preside at a function. He had also decided that his thousandth appearance on the stage would be for history. It would be something extraordinary, and this occasion would be one of them. This could have been his thousandth occasion. Thousandth occasion for presiding at a function. So instinctively, he goes towards the pandal. The lecture was in progress, although people kept coming and going. But Professor Gaitonde was not looking at the audience. There was something else he was looking at. He was staring at the platform as if mesmerized, as if captivated. There was a table and a chair, but the latter was unoccupied. The chair was unoccupied. The presidential chair unoccupied. The sight stirred him to the depths. He got very excited on seeing this presidential chair which was unoccupied. There was no one sitting at the presidential chair. Like a piece of iron attracted to a magnet, he swiftly moved towards the chair. Swiftly means fast, without delay. He rapidly, quickly moved towards the chair like a piece of iron attracted to a man magnet. 
The speaker stopped in mid-sentence, too shocked to continue. But the audience soon found voice. So the speaker who was speaking, he stopped, and he was too shocked to continue. He was surprised by what Professor Gaitonde was doing. The speaker was silent, however, the audience found voice. They were saying, Vacate the chair. This lecture series has no chairperson. Away from the platform, mister. The chair is symbolic, don't you know? The audience was not pleased with Professor Gaitonde's behavior. They were telling him that this chair is symbolic. That is why it is unoccupied. They wanted him to go away from the platform. Professor Gaitonde said, what nonsense. Whoever heard of a public lecture without a presiding dignitary? Presiding dignitary means a very important person. Professor Gaitonde says, what kind of public lecture is this without a presiding dignitary? It goes hand in hand. It must be there. Professor Gaitonde went to the mic and gave vent to his views. He went to the microphone and he gave vent to his views. To give vent to means expressing feelings and ideas. It means to passionately express negative emotions such as anger, frustration and so on. So he said, ladies and gentlemen, an unchaired lecture is like Shakespeare's Hamlet without the Prince of Denmark. Let me tell you, here he is drawing a comparison saying that there must be a presiding dignitary at a public lecture. The presidential chair must not be unoccupied. But the audience was in no mood to listen. Tell us nothing. We are sick of remarks from the chair of vote of thanks, of long introductions. We only want to listen to the speaker. We abolished the old customs long ago. Keep the platform empty, please. The audience is not pleased. They want him to leave the platform. We abolished the old customs long ago. To abolish means to formally put an end to something. This refers to this unoccupied presidential chair. They are saying that the chair is symbolic. While Professor Gaitonde claims that what kind of public lecture is this without a presiding dignitary? There must be a presiding dignitary. After hearing all this, Gangadhar Pand had the experience of speaking at 999 meetings and had faced the Pune audience as its most hostile. It is said that the professor had the experience of speaking at so many meetings and he still thought that the Pune audience was the most hostile. Hostile means unfriendly. So, he kept on talking, but the audience was not happy. He soon became a target for a shower of tomatoes, eggs and other objects. But he kept on trying valiantly to correct his sacrilege. Finally, the audience swarmed to the stage to eject him bodily. Here it is said that Professor kept on talking. He soon became a target for a shower of tomatoes, eggs and other objects. The audience started throwing tomatoes, eggs and all sorts of things. They wanted him off the stage. But he kept on trying valiantly, valiantly means bravely, to correct this sacrilege. Sacrilege refers to some violation or misuse of what is regarded as sacred, it means profanity or disrespect, blasphemy. So Professor wanted to correct this. Finally, after seeing that he is not leaving the stage, 
the audience swarmed to the stage. They rushed to the stage. To swarm up means to climb something rapidly by gripping it with one's hands and feet. They wanted to drag him off the stage. They wanted to eject him bodily. And in the crowd, Gangadhar Pant was nowhere to be seen. However, he was nowhere to be seen. Now this is what Professor Gaitande is telling to his friend Rajendra Deshpande. He is hoping that Rajendra Deshpande will offer some solution and give him some clue about what exactly happened to him. That is all I have to tell Rajendra. All I know is that I was found in the Azad Medan in the morning, but I was back in the world I'm familiar with. Now where exactly did I spend those two days when I was absent from here? Professor is trying to find out what exactly happened in those two days when he was absent from this world, because he only knows that he was found in the Azad Medan in the morning. However, he was back in the world and he is familiar with. Rajendra was dumbfounded by the narrative. Dumbfounded means greatly astonished. He was very surprised, very amazed. And it took him a while to reply. It took him some time to reply. Professor, before, just prior to your collision with the truck, what were you doing? Rajendra asked. Collision refers to the act of colliding, like a crash. Just before the truck hit you, what were you doing? He's asking him. I was thinking of the catastrophe theory and its implications for history. Right, I thought so. Rajendra smiled. We know that. Rajendra Deshpande is offering two theories, and one of them is the catastrophe theory to explain the behavior and whatever happened to Professor Gaitande. So he said, I thought so. Don't smile smugly, said Professor Gaitande. Smugly means with a self-satisfied look. It means to show excess satisfaction. Don't smile smugly, in case you think that it was just my mind playing tricks and my imagination running amok, look at this. Here, professor wants to show something to his friend. He says, in case you think I'm gone crazy, look at this. In case you think that it was just my mind playing tricks and my imagination running amok. To run amok means to behave out of control. To behave in a frenzied way. And triumphantly, Professor Gaitonde produced his vital piece of evidence, a page torn out of a book. Professor was showing a page torn out of a book. Rajendra read the text on the printed page and his face underwent a change. His face changed. To undergo a change means for some change to appear. Gone was the smile and in its place came a grave expression. The smile on his face was gone. And in the place of smile came a grave expression, a serious expression. He was visibly moved. He was surprised. He was touched. Gangadhar Pant pressed home his advantage. To press home one's advantage means to capitalize on or make full use of the advantage one has. So here Gangadhar Pant is realizing that he trusts him. His face underwent a change. There was no smile anymore, more there was a serious expression. And his friend looked visibly moved. He looked surprised and touched. So, Professor Gangadhar Pant wanted to make full advantage of this situation. So, he continues. 
I had inadvertently slipped the bakar in my pocket as I left the library. I discovered my error when I was paying for my meal. I had intended to return it the next morning, but it seems that in the melee of Azad Medan the book was lost. Only this torn off page remained. And luckily for me, the page contains vital evidence. Here, Professor explains what happens. What happened? He says, I had inadvertently. Inadvertently means unintentionally, accidentally. I have accidentally slipped the bucket in my pocket as I left the library. I realized my mistake. And that was when I was paying for my meal. And I wanted to return the book the next morning, but it looks like the book was lost in all that commotion at Ezad Medan. So the book was lost and the only this torn off page remained. Professor says that this page contains vital evidence, a crucial evidence. Rajendra again read the page. It described how Vishwasrao narrowly missed the bullet and how that event, taken as an omen by the Maratha army, turned the tide in their favor. Rajendra again went through the page where there was a description of Vishwas Rao, how he narrowly missed the bullet. Narrowly means only by a small amount. By only a small margin, he missed the bullet. It says that that event was taken as an omen. Omen means some event regarded as a prophetic significance. This was something very important for Maratha army. They considered this event as an omen. And this event turned the tide in their favor. To turn the tide means to reverse a situation in one's favor. Now look at this. Gangadhar Pand produced his own copy of Bau Saibanchi Bakar, opened at a relevant page. The account ran thus. Now, Professor is showing his own copy of the same book, opened at a certain page. And it says, And then, Vishwasra guided his horse to the melee where the elite troops were fighting. And he attacked them. And God expressed his displeasure. He was hit by the bullet. In this copy, which... Professor Gaitonde has, it is said that Vishwas Rao was hit by the bullet. Two different accounts of the same story. Professor Gaitonde, you have given me food for thought. Food for thought means you have given me something to think about. Until I saw this material evidence, I had simply put your experience down to fantasy. But facts can be stranger than fantasies as I'm beginning to realize. Facts. What are the facts? I'm dying to know, Professor Gaitonde said. Rajendra Deshpande is trying to explain what happened to Professor Gaitonde. Rajendra motioned him to silence and started pacing the room. He motioned him to silence. It means he showed him to be silent. And he started pacing the room. To pace means to walk to and fro. Obviously, under great mental strain. Mental strain means some mental stress. Finally, he turned around and said, Professor Gaitonde, I will try to rationalize your experience on the basis of two scientific theories as known today. This is where Professor Gaitonde will hear about these two theories. One is the catastrophe theory and the other one is the lack of determinism in quantum theory. Rajendra Deshpande continues. 
Whether I succeed or not in convincing you of the facts, only you can judge. For you have indeed passed through a fantastic experience, or, more correctly, a catastrophic experience. Here he refers to the theory, the catastrophe theory, that's why he says a catastrophic experience. Rajendra Deshpande says that whether I succeed or not in convincing you of the facts, only you can judge. To judge means to form an opinion or conclusion about. Rajendra Deshpande says you have indeed passed through a fantastic experience, or, more correctly, a catastrophic experience. Please continue, Rajendra. I'm all ears. Professor Gaitonde replied, I'm all ears means, go ahead, I'm listening attentively. Rajendra continued pacing as he talked. He kept walking to and fro. You have heard a lot about the catastrophe theory at that seminar. Let us apply it to the Battle of Panipat. Wars fought face to face on open grounds offer excellent examples of this theory. The Maratha army was facing Abdali's troops on the field of Panipat. There was no great disparity between the latter's troops and the opposing forces. Here, Rajendra Deshpande is explaining the theories. He says that now they will apply the catastrophe theory to the Battle of Panipat. He says that wars fought face to face on open grounds, such as the Battle of Panipat, offer great examples of this theory. He also says that there was no great disparity between the Maratha army and the Abdali troops. Disparity means difference. There was not much difference in the troops. Their armor was comparable. So, a lot depended on the leadership and the morale of the troops. The juncture at which, at which Vishwasrao, the son of and heir to the Peshwa, was killed, proved to be the turning point. The turning point was this juncture at which Vishwasrao was killed. Juncture means a joint or a place where some events or time meet, a place where things join. This was the turning point. As history has it, means, as we find out from the history, his uncle, Bahu Saib, rushed into the melee and was never seen again. Whether he was killed in battle or survived is not known. But for the troops at that particular moment, that blow of losing their leaders was crucial. It means it was very important if the leader was lost. The moral of the troops played a certain role. If the leader was killed, the troop would lose their morale. They lost their morale and fighting spirit. They there followed an utter rout. If the leader was killed, if the troop lost their leader at any point of time, their morale and fighting spirit would be also lost. There followed an utter rout. Utter rout means that the battle was defeat, that was complete defeat. Exactly, Professor. And what you have shown me on that torn page is the course taken by the battle when the bullet missed Vishwasrao. A crucial event gone the other way. 
and its effect on the troops was also the opposite. It boosted their morale and provided just that extra impetus that made all the difference, Rajendra said. Rajendra agrees with the professor. He says that what he has seen on that torn page is the course taken by the battle when the bullet missed Vishwasra. And this was one crucial event gone the other way. That is why the troops were... It boosted their morale. It provided just that extra impetus that made all the difference. Impetus means a driving force. It also refers to stimulus or impulse. That is why it made all the difference. After the bullet missing Vishwas Rao, the troops were very motivated. This event boosted their morale. Maybe so, Similar statements are made about the Battle of Waterloo, which Napoleon could have won. But we live in a unique world which has a unique history. This idea of it might have been is okay for the sake of speculation, but not for reality. Gangadhar Pant said, Professor is saying that this idea is okay for the sake of speculation, for the sake of theorizing. However, not for reality. I take issue with you there. In fact, that brings me to my second point, which you may find strange, but please hear me out, Rajendra said. Rajendra says, mm, I'm not sure. In fact, I want to refer to my second point. You might find my second point strange, but please hear me out. Gangadhar Pant listened expectantly as Rajendra continued. What do we mean by reality? We experience it directly with our senses or indirectly via instruments. But is it limited to what we see? Does it have other manifestations? Rajendra Deshpande continues and he asks certain questions. He is asking... What is reality? And does it have other manifestations? Is it limited to only what we see? Or is there something else beyond what we see? That reality might not be unique, has been found from experience on very small systems of atoms and their constituent particles. He says that... This reality is maybe not shown to the naked eye, but it's found in experiments on very small systems, atoms and their constituent particles. When dealing with such systems, the physicists discovered something startling, something amazing. The behavior of these systems cannot be predicted definitively, even if all the physical laws governing those systems are known. Here what Rajendra Deshpande is saying that when dealing with such small systems as atoms and their constituent particles, there is something amazing, there is something that physicists discovered. And this, they discovered that the behavior of these systems, these small systems, cannot be predicted definitively, even if all the other laws are known. Take an example. Here, he gives an example. I fire an electron from a source. Where will it go? If I fire a bullet from a gun into a given, different, given direction at a given speed, I know where it will be at a later time. But I cannot make such an assertion for the electron. It may be here, there, anywhere. I can at best quote odds for it being found in a specified location at a specified time. 
Rajendra Desh Pandey is saying that the case is different with, for example, an electron. It may be here, it may be there. And he says, I can at best quote odds for it being found in a specified location at a specified time. He said, if this electron is found in a specified location, it's just an accident or a specified time. The lack of determinism in quantum theory. This is another theory he, he, he suggests. The lack of determinism in quantum theory. Even an ignoramus historian like me has heard of it. Ignoramus means ignorant. Professor Gaitonde says. He says that even I have heard about this theory, the lack of determinism in quantum theory. So, imagine many world pictures. In one world, the electron is found here, in another it is over there. In yet another, it is in a still different location. Once the observer finds where it is, we know which world we are talking about. But all those alternative worlds could exist just the same. He says that all these other worlds which are alternative, they could exist just the same. Rajendra paused to marshal his thoughts. To marshal his thoughts means to he was thinking about it. He was gathering his thoughts. But is there any contact between those many worlds? Is there any contact between those worlds? Professor Gaitonde asked. Yes and no. Imagine two worlds, for example. In both, an electron is orbiting the nucleus of an atom, like planets around the sun. Gangadhar Pant interjected. He added, he interrupted. Well, not quite, Rajendra Deshpande said. We know the precise trajectory of the planet. Precise means correct. We know the correct trajectory, correct path of the planet. We know how it moves. The electron could be orbiting in any of a large number of specified states. This electron they are talking about, this electron could be orbiting. It could be moving in any of a large number of specified states. There are so many different states. To orbit means to take a curved path, to move in orbit around, like a star or planet. So these states may be used to identify the world. In state number one, we have the electron in a state of higher energy. In state number two, it is in a state of lower energy. It can make a jump from high to low energy and send out a pulse of radiation. Or a pulse of radiation can knock it out of state number two into state number one. Such transitions are common in microscopic systems. What if it happened on a macroscopic level, Rajendra said. Here they are discussing the microscopic systems and the different states. It is said that the electron could be orbiting in any of a large number of specified states. Here few examples are given an electron in a state of higher energy and the one in the state of lower energy. It is mentioned that it can also make a jump from high to low energy. Now what they are saying is that such transitions, such changes are common in microscopic systems. So what if it happened on macroscopic level? I get you. I understand. You are suggesting that I made a transition from one world to another and back again, Gangadhar Pant asked. 
fantastic though it seems, this is the only explanation I can offer. My theory is that catastrophic situations offer radically different alternatives to the world to proceed. Here Rajendra Deshpande says that this is the only explanation I can offer. His theory is that these catastrophic situations, such as the one professor experienced, often offer a radically different alternatives. These kind of events offer a radically different alternatives for the world to proceed. Radically means in a fundamental way or completely. It seems that so far as reality is concerned, all alternatives are viable. But the observer can experience only one of them at a time. What Rajendra Deshpande is saying, he is saying that it seems that all alternatives are practical. They are all viable. They are all capable of working successfully. They are all workable, but the observer can experience only one of them at a time. By making a transition, you are able to experience two worlds, although one at a time. The one you live in now and the one where you spend two days. One has the history we know, the other a different history. These are two worlds that he is talking about. He is talking about Professor Gaitonde's transition. And he is suggesting that he was experiencing two worlds at the same time. The separation of or bifurcation took place in the Battle of Panipat. He is saying that this all happened. Bifurcation means division. That the separation of this division took place in the Battle of Panipat. This is where division took place. One world went one way and the other world went the other way. He continues saying that you neither travel to the past nor to the future. You were in the present but experiencing a different world. Of course, by the same token, there must be many more different worlds arising out of bifurcations at different points of time. Rajendra Deshpande is explaining that he was in the present, he was not traveling to past, he was not traveling to the future, he was experiencing a different world in the present. And he says, of course, by the same token, by the same token means in the same way or for the same reason. By the same token is phrase of token. Of course, by the same token, there must be many more different worlds. By the same token also means in the same way. In the same way, there must be many more different worlds arising out of bifurcations at different points of time. What he is suggesting is that there must be many different worlds that are arising, that are coming into being, that are originating out of these bifurcations, these divisions, at different points of time. As Rajendra concluded, Gangadhar Pant asked the question that was beginning to bother him most. He asked, but why did I make the transition? If I knew the answer, I would solve a great problem. Unfortunately, there are many unsolved questions in science and this is one of them. But that does not stop me from guessing. Rajendra smiled and proceeded. You need some interaction to cause a transition. Perhaps at the time of the collision you were thinking about the catastrophe theory and its role in wars. We remember that it was mentioned that Professor was thinking about the catastrophe theory and its role in wars just before the truck hit him. Maybe you were wondering about the Battle of Panipat. Perhaps 
the neurons in your brain acted as a trigger. Maybe these neurons in his brain, uh, they maybe acted as a trigger. Maybe that is why it happened. A good guess. I was indeed wondering what course history would have taken if the result of the battle had gone the other way, Professor Gaitonde said. That was going to be the topic of my thousandth presidential address. This was going to be the topic of his thousandth presidential address. Now you are in the happy position of recounting your real-life experience rather than just speculating, Rajendra laughed. But Gangadhar Pant was grave. Here, Professor Gangadhar Pant was grave. He was serious. Rajendra Deshpande laughed. He was telling him that he has the real-life experience rather than just theorizing. No, Rajendra. My thousandth address was made on the Azad Medan when I was rudely interrupted. No. The Professor Gaitonde, who disappeared while defending his chair on the platform, will now never be seen presiding at another meeting. I have conveyed my regrets to the organizers of the Panipat Seminar. Here, Professor Gaitonde says that his thousandth address was made on the Azad Medan, and it was a disaster. He was rudely interrupted, and he decided that this will be his last presiding. So he had conveyed his regrets to the organizers of the Panipat Seminar. Dear students, this was The Adventure, written by Giant Narlika. I hope you like the story. We will continue next time. Have a nice day and see you soon.